Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be doing a Posca pen paint with me. I created this painting with Posca pens a little while ago and I wanted to try and recreate something like it. So before I begin, be sure to like and subscribe and let's see what I can come up with. I started off the painting by sketching out my idea, but before I get too far into that, I wanted to say thank you guys so much for helping me reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube here. I'm very excited about it and I'm very excited to keep learning and growing with you all. This has been an awesome journey so far and I can't wait to see where it leads me. So I just started sketching out all of these ocean creatures. That was my idea for this painting. I wanted to make an ocean seascape kind of thing and I needed some inspiration. So I pulled out my sticker and to say thank you for 1000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway of this sticker bundle, which is five of my stickers. I own a small business, if you didn't know, where I sell and make all of my own stickers. So I wanted to just say thank you and have a way to give back to you guys for being so awesome and helping me get where I am. So if you want to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is go to anchoredartdesigns.com, click the contact section, and enter in your name, email, and that you'd like to be entered into the giveaway. Thank you guys so much, and the link will also be in the bio if you want to be entered for a chance to win my sticker bundle. So I used the jellyfish sticker, which is a part of that bundle, to inspire the jellyfishes, jellyfish, jellyfishes in the sketch. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just sketching out all of the sea creatures and all of the things that I want to be in my painting. I've always wanted to do an ocean seascape kind of painting with a whole bunch of sea creatures and sea life everywhere because I really like the ocean and I think it's really cool, but it has always seemed really daunting because I always want to do it on this massive like life-size scale and like I'm not going to paint a life-size dolphin, you know, like maybe someday, but not right now. And so it was really nice to be able to take this on a smaller scale and to just do it little by little piece at a time. I wanted it to look kind of chaotic and crowded, which it does in the sketch, but now it's time to bring in the Posca pens. And I actually think they made it look a little bit neater and a little less crowded, which surprised me because I thought all of the colors and all of the things going on would make it seem more chaotic, but the color actually helped separate and make everything distinct from each other, which was really cool to see how it altered it. I decided to start with the jellyfish and I picked this pink color and the jellyfish kind of ended looking like the jellyfish from SpongeBob. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's kind of out there, but I decided to just have fun with it. I wasn't going for realistic. I was going for colorful and vibrant and just an explosion of colors. Next up, I painted the manta rays and for them, I wanted them to be purple because it just seemed like if the jellyfish were pink, the manta rays should be purple you know, logic. So I decided to try and blend two purples together. I did want the Posca pens to be seen for how they are and to be kind of that block style, like how I did the jellyfish, just two separate colors without blending. But for the manta rays, I just felt like in order to show their positions and what they were doing and how they were swimming in the water, I needed to add some shadows and shading. So I decided to grab a paintbrush in order to add some shading. And then I kind of used similar techniques throughout the rest of it. So a lot of the other animals also got shading. So this is a hammerhead shark up here at the top. I don't know if you could tell that or not. I kind of ruined my white Posca pen because you know, for the cause. And then it was time to do this little seahorse. Not very little, it's kind of a big seahorse, but maybe it's just up close to the camera, the imaginary camera, I mean. And then I painted the background fishies blue, and then I added some seaweed up front to match the green of the seahorse, and now it was time for, in my mind, the spotlight creature, which is the octopus. And for the octopus, I wanted it to be a red-orange kind of thing, which ended up working out pretty well. I have two separate yellow Posca pens, so this one's kind of the blending Posca pen, which... 
I don't know, like, you're probably not supposed to do that, but again, for the cause, we needed to do it. So, then I needed to do the underneath part of the octopus legs, and it kind of turned out looking like pepperoni pizza later, but I forgot to fill in those squares as I went, so I decided to do that really quickly, and then go back to making the pepperoni pizza octopus legs. It's kind of funny, I don't dislike it though, I think it turned out pretty well. And finally, it was time to add in the background, which separated all of the creatures even more and made it all come together, I think, and actually helped separate each individual creature in its own way. So this is how it was looking, and then it was time to add in some of the background background of the entire painting. So I used this gray Posca pen and it kind of not bursted, but leaked on me a little bit, but that's okay. I used a paintbrush to smear out the excess and to make some defining lines in all of the things. That way I didn't lose where I had put my sketches and ruler markings before. And now it was time for my favorite part, which is the smaller and finer details. I always love this part. I think it brings the whole picture together and gives it a whole different new life. And I always want to jump ahead and just skip to this part, but you have to do all of the rest before you can get to the final layers. At first, I wasn't sure how I wanted to do the outlines because I didn't want them to take over the drawing and only be the central focus. I put so much detail into the Posca pen art, but it still needed more definition. So I am glad that I added these lines and I think it helped the drawing come together a lot more. It was a lot of work to do, but I do think it was worth it in the end. So I'm glad that I made this decision. And then I added some highlights to everything and some awesome bubble effects which I liked a lot with this white gel pen and this is how it was looking. I was really pleased with it so far and now it was time to add all of the details around the painting and make the paint, you know, the paint application come to life. So that was what I was doing here, adding in all of the little symbols and markings and making it look like the old word app paint thing. It's really hard for me to save this part for the end because it's so much fun and so satisfying to fill in those final tiny details that just put it above and beyond. It's crazy how much those little touches can make the biggest difference in an art piece and just taking your time and making sure to do everything detailed and neat just completely transforms things and makes it really neat. I decided to date the image so that I knew when I painted it and then I named it the 1K Ocean Celebration and put the little paint application. So here it is. This is how it turned out. I think it looks so cool and it was so fun to create and I'm actually really proud of it and I like the composition and everything. Let me know what you like, what your favorite parts are about it. I love the colors and the composition and all of the creatures come together. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am so excited to be at 1K and I'm so excited to see where we go from here. This is the other Posca painting that I did and here they are together. I think I've improved quite a bit. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe and enter the giveaway if you're interested. The link will be in the description.